friendly neighborhood surveyor and today will be the first day um, we're gonna go over some um, training so in the link or in there's a couple links in the description one is to the um, training schedule for apprentice for operating engineers out in Southern California that kind of gives a good outline so in that link you'll see um, in blue where you can um, get a more detailed uh, training schedule and that's kind of what I'll, I'll be using and um, any other link that I find will be in there as well regarding uh, you know any type of better teaching so if there's like like pegging a level I'm not gonna recreate a video on how to peg a level when there's plenty of them out there so I'll have links for stuff like that so um, we will um, just kind of start at the beginning and talk about um, just getting into the business, the work truck, um, equipment, common equipment, uh, care, maintenance, stuff like that. And as we go forward, you know, we'll get more into the duties as surveyors and what you need to know, how to approach it, and just in a, in a general sense. And we'll, then we'll take questions as they come. So this is what the uh, link goes to. Uh, when you look at the link in blue, it'll talk about some of the duties of, a, of an apprentice. It won't have the pay scale. Uh, and then in blue, there'll be a link there that'll take you to this page here. It's a, it's a download. So if we look at the first, um, there it is, zero to 500 hours. That's approximately three months, three months of working. Uh, what they what they talk about, and this is something that I'm trying to go over with with any any new hire and what I had to go over with with our guys now. And our guys have been with us for about two years each. So I, I was trying to highlight stuff that um, that maybe I haven't covered in full that they've done, but I haven't covered in full to where if they were to work with another company, I want to make sure that when they go to another company or if they go to another company that were that were well represented by what we turn out. I just don't want to turn out somebody who just knows how to plumb up a rod. That's that's not what we're in the business for, at least us. So um so I was talking to um our employees about like care of hand tools and stuff. And you know, we use a lot of hand tools. You know, there's everything from our plumb bobs to our hammers to our hand levels. Um, chisels, hammers, sledgehammers, uh, uh, manhole picks, all that stuff. So I, I explained and, and oh, really quick, I'm going to, I'm going to try to rewrite this and then lay out kind of what I'm saying. And that's something that I want feedback on later. And there'll be a link to those so people can give me feedback or at least, you know, you can, you can make it your own. So I tell the employees that, any of the tools, even stuff that's given to them, um, you know, we're just making sure that everything's in, in good working condition. If uh, if things need to be sharpened, if things need to be replaced, most of these tools are the cheapest on 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 our side of surveying. So replacing a uh, twenty five dollar machete isn't a big deal, and I'd rather replace a twenty five dollar machete than spend uh, fifty dollars um, over an hour or two of someone trying to sharpen a um, a cheap machete. Uh, the care of survey vehicles and equipment. Now, this this all differs from company to company. Uh, I bring home a company vehicle. Uh, the other party chief he lives he leaves his at the office and he drives his own vehicle. Um, these vehicles are stocked with a lot of equipment, and then we like I don't take home the instrument. I leave that at the office. But there's still stuff in there that it's expensive or it may appear expensive to other people. So we you know, always want to make sure that uh, everything's locked up and, um, you know, where you prevent things from being stolen. Also, on the apprentice side, I would say, you know, get with your party chief or anyone in the office in regards to like oil changes, uh, tire rotation, any, any, you know, engine light comes on, whatever. It's 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 a good idea to even even take that um, position on like hey 
uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna handle all the maintenance on the on the vehicles, and that's you know if you don't have a contract with with like a fleet service when it comes to maintenance and everything. But you know it's always gonna be proactive. At least that's what I I teach our guys, and then also. Like if we come in early and they and they and they need to you know maybe get that extra hour or so, then they'll take care of those oil changes, tire rotations, stuff like that. And that way they get their full eight. Um, rem- so care of the survey instrument. Every every company's different. Our company we don't we don't mind if you carry the instrument on the legs, but as long as it's on your shoulder, so not not flung over your shoulder, uh, or or the prefer the preferred way is to carry the legs and the and the instrument box to the uh, to the control point. We're never that far away from our from our control points to carry it from the truck to the um, to the control point. But I always stress whatever makes you feel the safest. You don't want to drop. You know our instruments are. Uh, Damn near uh, forty thousand dollars, so that's that's a lot of money on your shoulders. And I tell people you will get fired. Just if you you will get fired if you drop an instrument because it's your fault. You know, as long as you have training in it, you know that's that's where it's like every company should have a policy. Um, so we're moving and replacing the box. You know, we tell everyone that when you when you remove the instrument, lock the box back up. Don't leave it open. A lot of the a lot of the little hinges and and um, and, and clips and snaps and everything they uh, do come apart pretty easy. So lock the box up, and um, and also always good to lock everything up just to make sure everything's locked up in case someone wants to just pick it up. You know it's locked all the time, and also you know these instruments get beat up a little bit in that box while you're traveling, and um, it is it is very important to keep that box locked. Also, because if you have something that happens to the instrument, and when you send it in to get fixed, and the inside of that box is dirty, and your and some of the clips that keep it closed are uh, broken, sometimes they'll void the warranty on that on that instrument because if you're not taking care of it out in the field, then they see that just by the condition of the instrument itself and then also the box. You know, you can't prevent scratches and stuff like that on the outside, but on the inside, it should be clean. And we we make all of our employees clean the instrument every Friday and the box and, and stuff like that just as normal maintenance. Um, so I think we covered the carrying equipment mounted on a staking staff, or no, uh, carrying equipment mounted on a staking staff or a, or a tripod. All the stuff that we use is is all robotic, so we don't we don't um, really allow things to just be thrown over the shoulder because you, you'll lose contact. You know, just keeping it straight up. Um, don't use it as a digging bar. Don't use it to um, to do anything but to stake out points. Um, uh, setting up the instrument, I would say anyone who says, "Yeah, I've uh, I know how to do it. I've, I've set it up plenty of times." To me, you can never set it up too many times. And if you don't want to take out the whole instrument, or if you're a small company and all you have is one instrument, make the guy just set up the tri brac over and over and over again uh, in uh, different positions with uh, with uh, with the hill going up, hill, you know, something going down, and, and just get used to. Kind of uh, weird setups, but practice with the tri uh, tri brac. Safety practices uh, in the union. So I, I started out in the union. I went through the whole apprenticeship program, came certified chairman, and um, by the time that I was going to party chief, they weren't holding any party chief classes at the time. Uh, we were in a recession, so we were made to uh, take a CPR and stuff like that. So that covered like the first aid and. Uh, and every every truck had a first aid kit, but it was pretty minimal. And I and I think now with cell phones and stuff like, I mean, obviously with cell phones, you know, I'm talking. I started back in '87, so you know we had to take somebody to the hospital. Now with cell phones, you can call 911 wherever you're at. Uh, use of sharp tools. This is I want to say common sense, but we use stuff like machetes, brush hooks. Um, you know, even even our hammers and the chisels and stuff like that, 
So no swinging of 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 these um, of these tools uh, recklessly. I I tell my guys use a shovel first. You know you can swing a shovel into a into a bush and you can do some pretty good damage with a with the machete. Unless you know what you're doing, um, you have more of a chance of injuring yourself. Uh, and it all depends on the brush and the trees and the branches that you're going after. We also use a lot of rose pruners. Uh, precautions for job site hazards. I, I would say yes, you know, and, and anytime you can point those out, um, you know, we're talking holes, we're talking um, like manholes and storm drain, um, manholes that are um, just covered with a piece of plywood or, or um, trenches that aren't marked. There's, there, there are hazards everywhere. And uh, yeah, you just, you got to be used to it. And out here in Southern California, there's more Spanish spoken on job sites than there is English. So you got to know the terms for, you know, when people throw things off of roofs, um, uh, what danger is. And we can go over all that stuff if you guys have a problem or you guys have, you know, any problems um, reading Spanish. Uh Survey terminology and use of hand signals. This is where I'm going to need help from you guys on, um, you know, questions you guys may have when it comes to terminology because it, it it does have its own language. Like when we when we write on lath or um, paint in the street, we do have our own language. Hand signals. Uh, I will, you know, I'll, I'll I'll make a whole different video on this subject here and then link to some hand signals other than drawing some little stick men. Um, Hand signals, I think, are still used. I use them a lot with 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 my coworker that I've worked with forever, and it's just it's just easier. It's easier to communicate. And uh, you know, we went from radios to now cell phones, and I'm not going to call the guy. I can just tell him distance away, and he understands. Uh, Procedures for stake driving and making and placing of guard stakes okay and laugh it's just it's just how to how to set a stake with um with with laugh um i'll make a separate video on this as well because when i started any 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 um like precise point was 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 a two by two hub tacked then um then our next option was a was a one by two hub people call them stakes just this is all part of terminology and now we use a lot of 60d nails uh and our our lath you know that's what has all the information pertaining to what we stake out on it it's it's offsets it's elevation it's stationing and stuff like that so i think uh five and six we can at least uh get a intro some intro videos on on what to expect and then i would say talk to the people that you work with and see what you guys do differently because everything here we all do and we may use different terminology on what we do or why we do it uh, what we write right on the lath but it's it's all the same thing i guarantee you if i staked curb in another state the only thing i'm gonna have to do is change my terminology and maybe um you know, the actual material, but I guarantee you the curb will still be poured correctly. Same thing. Someone came here from Alabama and, and stay curb. As long as they know how we do it out here, it will get done. So, um, five and six, make a, a, a video on that again on the, um, on the, um, in the description, I'll have a link to this and, this thing's a couple years old. So apprentice A, 2045 an hour, and it goes up to certified chainman, 4868 an hour. And out here in California, it used to be like the chainman was about a buck fifty, two bucks less an hour than like a party chief. Um, that's after six thousand hours, three years, and that's three years of work and and through all of this stuff here, this is work hours, and then you're taking classes through the apprenticeship um, program to kind of fine tune your 
your like um, calcium capability, um, reading a reading a, a linker rod, a Philly rod, uh, how to use a hand level. A lot of and, and I'm going by when when I took the courses. I um, I'm going to talk to somebody and see how how things have changed in the last thirty years. So there you go. Uh, and again, ask me any question you want, and we'll try to make this um, a really good. Uh, learning process and, and Q&A process for, for everyone. Thanks a lot. Survey out.